Now, you might have heard over the weekend, maybe even from our superb Instagram account, which posts great live updates like this, and you should follow us at TLDR News UK, that the government is supposedly considering a change to how student loans work in England. A change which, if introduced, could make studying at university yet more expensive, and only really benefit the highest earners. We don't know all the details yet, but let's explain what we do know right now. So, as a quick refresher, let's explain how the student's loan system works at the moment in England. Currently, universities can charge students up to £9,250 a year for their tuition. Everyone, regardless of family income, is offered a loan to cover this cost. If you accept that offer, then by the end of a three-year course, you owe £27,750. The other component is the maintenance loan, a loan offered to help students cover the cost of rent, food, books, whatever they need. The size of the loan offered depends on the student's family income, with a bonus given to those studying in London, and whether you'll be living at home or away. Anyway, with those questions answered, you'll be offered between £3,516 and £12,382 a year. Let's take a number somewhere in the middle and multiply that by a three-year course. Add that to your tuition fee and you have £45,000 worth of debt which, conveniently for this example, is the average amount of debt for a student graduating in 2020. Fortunately for students, you don't need to start paying back that debt until you've graduated, and until you have a job. However, just ignoring the debt probably isn't the best idea, as it's subject to a compounding interest rate. The interest on the debt varies year by year, but is based on RPI. If you're earning less than £27,295 a year, then your debt only goes up by RPI, broadly in line with inflation, so in real terms, it's not really going up much at all. If you're earning more than that though, it does go up more, with up to 3% being added depending on how much you're earning. That means that every year, the interest on the debt can be as much as RPI plus 3%, or about 6% over recent years, meaning your debt is very much going up in real terms. It's also worth noting, and maybe we're being a bit cynical, but RPI is an interesting metric for the government to have chosen here. RPI is a perfectly valid measure of inflation, but it does often produce higher rates than CPI the inflation rate used for most other things by the government, notably including pensions. So it could be argued that they deliberately chose the higher index to boost debts more than they had to. Now, I'm not saying they did, I'm just saying that it's very possible. Anyway, you get the point. Students collect a lot of debt while studying, and that debt goes up every year, sometimes quite considerably. So how is it ever paid off? Well, if you wanted an easy answer, you're not getting one. And to be honest, I'm not sure you should have expected one by this point in the video. As things stand, students only start paying off their debt once they're earning over £27,295 a year, the number I mentioned earlier in relation to interest rates. Earn less than that and you don't need to make any repayments, and your loan only goes up quite slowly, broadly in line with inflation. However, if you are earning more than that, let's say £30,000 a year, you need to pay 9% on every penny you earn over the 27295 threshold. For the £30,000 example, that would mean paying 9% on £2,705, or £243.81. If you're earning more than that, then it obviously goes up further. So someone earning £50,000 a year would be paying £2,043.81 every year. Anyway, hopefully that's enough backstory to get everyone up to speed, and to depress everyone who's got a good amount of student debt. So what's the government supposedly got planned? What are they changing? And please do remember this is just speculation and reporting at the moment. This hasn't yet been confirmed. Well, there's talk that we could see the threshold for repayments actually fall, which means beginning to repay at lower salaries. We don't know what the new level will be, but apparently one minister described £20,000 as a bit low, so a £23,000 threshold is supposedly around what we should expect. Now, the government is hoping that this move will save the Treasury about £2 billion a year, but it also, obviously, means that students will start paying more. If we take the example we gave earlier of someone earning £30,000 a year, they'd now be paying £630 in debt annually, an increase of nearly £400 every year. 
And it's the interest rate part of this that makes it really depressing. As with their debt ever increasing, that £30,000 earner has no real hope of ever paying off the whole debt or avoiding what is essentially a graduate tax. Because if they were to start earning more, the interest rates would increase further, up until £49,130. Which means that if you're earning less than that, odds are you're not actually paying off anything besides the annual interest rate. And you're probably not even covering that. To make things clear then, it's only those earning significantly over £50,000 a year, we're talking 70, 80, £100,000, who have a really good shot at clearing their debt, with 83% of graduates classed as unlikely to ever pay off their loans fully. So this potential government plan is only really good news if you're a high earner, as you'll start paying off your debt sooner and thus pay less interest. For everyone else, well, they still won't clear it, but they'll have to pay more towards this endless pit of debt than they did before. Now, the good news is, after 30 years, your debt is cleared, when you get to around your mid-50s. So you can just pay the grad tax and never end up actually paying it off before it's wiped. But that might be changing too. New proposals also suggest increasing the timeline to 40 years, pretty much to retirement for most people meaning that you'll be paying this your entire working life. To make it slightly better, they are suggesting reducing the maximum tuition fees. But even then, it seems like these changes will only hit students harder, especially lower earners. In fact, even the government's own MP and chair of the Commons Education Committee, Robert Holfton, said that more needed to be done to improve the situation, especially commenting on the interest rate issue. Now, the government's expected to argue that these decisions and changes are being made to encourage young people toward technical and vocational training, with the FT reporting that they believe too many people are racking up debts studying soft three-year university courses in arts and social sciences, and is looking to funnel more 18-year-olds towards technical training that is cheaper and will pay a faster economic dividend. Is this the right thing to do? Well, many disagree, arguing that there's better strategies that could have the same effect. Is it fair? Well, that depends. If they're going to say, from this day forward, this is the new system we'll be using, then sure, I guess that's fair. People might not like it and argue that it only helps high earners, but it is more fair. New university students will be entering this new plan willingly. However, if they retroactively apply this to all existing graduates with student debts, then that's clearly not fair, like, at all. No company would be able to change an existing contract like this. The FCA would come down on them hard. But the government, well, they can. They could fundamentally change how existing grads pay back, even if they signed an old contract years ago. But just because they can doesn't mean that it's fair, or that they should. What do you think? Do you think the government will make these changes? Should the government make them? Comment your thoughts down below. As always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. Then you too can back us on Patreon. The link is in the description.